Since not all Android devices are the same size and people use their devices in different ways, we need a few ways to be able to create a delightful experience across device sizes. One such way is to use flow layouts. Flow row and flow column are similar to row and column layouts. However, the items will flow to the next row or column when there is no more space in that area. To create a flow row, we simply replace the usage of row with flow row, which enables the reflowing feature. The max items in each row parameter defines the maximum items in the main axis to allow in one line before wrapping to the next. When nothing is set, the flow layout will attempt to place as many as possible in each line, keeping the ordering intact. When dealing with flow layouts, there are two axes that items will be laid out against, the main axis and the cross axis. The main axis is the direction in which items are laid out, whereas the cross axis is the direction in which the overall contents inside the container are arranged. The default main axis arrangement is arrangement.start, but we can set this to have a horizontal arrangement of center to center all the items inside their row, arrangement.end to have all the items docked to the right-hand side, space between to spread the items out in their rows, space around where items are spaced with even spacing around the edges and space between the items, and spaced by, which gives an equal gap of the same amount between each item. When using a flow column, similar options are available. For example, we can also use the spaced by arrangement here. Another modifier that can be used is the full max column width or full max row height when using flow column or flow row. When this modifier is applied, the items in the same column or row take up the same width or height as the biggest item in the column or row. Although flow layouts look as though they can only help with UIs that resemble a kind of filtering mechanism, they are useful for creating grid-like layouts too. For example, we can combine flow rows with weights to achieve rows that take up an area and take up all of the row space, or a fraction of it. In this snippet, we create five items repeatedly, and then for every odd item number, we set it to take up the full width of the row. Otherwise, we use the weight modifier to take up half of the weight of the row. This, combined with max items in each row, gives us the grid-like layout. Something to note when using width with a fraction provided to the container, the way in which this works in a flow row versus row is different. In a flow row, this will take up 70% of the width of the container, whereas with a row, this will take up 70% of the remaining row width, minus the first item that's already placed inside the row. Dashboard type layouts are a great example of where using flow rows and flow columns shines, as you can easily have the UI look different based on the size of your screen without having to write completely custom UIs. In the jet lagged example, we can use a combination of flow row with flow column in conjunction with window size classes to determine when to add additional flow columns. The real power of flow layouts is when used in conjunction with modifiers such as within, which takes the incoming constraints into account. If the incoming constraints are more restrictive than the requested size, it will obey the incoming constraints and attempt to be as close as possible to the preferred size. If you are in the flow and wanting more info, including how to do lazy loading and how to implement an overflow indicator, check out the linked documentation. Happy composing. Thank you.